Hello, this is Ashi from Crafting with Ashi, and welcome to this video. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. I'm going to show you some tricks and tips to use our watercolour pencils to make a card. This is the card I made, and I'm going to show you how I did some of the watercolouring. Because normally when I do the colouring, I just fast forward through it, and you never get to really see what I've done. So um, I thought I'd show you just a little bit about how I watercolour so you understand where I'm coming from. It's really easy to do and I don't want you to be scared of it so I'm going to show you. So the stamp set I'm going to use today is this one called Light Me Home and I'm using this big sentiment here and on the card I also used this one that said was heartfelt wishes for a wonderful season. Now the one thing you need to know about watercolouring, well two first things I'm going to start off with is that I've got things set up in my Stamparatus because it's a big stamp so this means I can stamp it more than once if something goes wrong. Uh, we're going to be using this paper here which is shimmery white cardstock and the reason I'm using shimmery white and not our normal whisper white is that this takes water much better than our whisper white does. If you use the whisper white you have a greater chance of um, over wetting the cardstock and the cardstock will then start to peel and rub you know and it won't look nice at all. So the first thing I'd say about watercolouring is to use the right cardstock. So that's why I'm using shimmery cardstock or you can use a watercolour cardstock. Okay. The next thing, <coughs> excuse me, the next thing we're going to talk about is ink and you need to use a permanent ink i.e. one that's not going to blend with water so I'd recommend either you stays on or some other permanent ink but stays on is the one that I sell so you know use a permanent ink and therefore when you use the water it's not going to run all over the place and get all mixed all messed up so we're just going to ink up our stamp here get it nicely inked up I've re-inked my ink pad so it should be working better than it has and I'm just going to use this as I said the Stamparatus the reason this is I'm using this is now I can see in the fine detail of the house I just want things to be a little bit more black than they are and this way I can stamp more than once and, and get a really good impression and this is the beauty of the Stamparatus yeah now I'm happy so close up our Stamparatus. You can clean the stamp just with your normal simple chamois which is this. So you can clean it just like this. It will stain the stamp slightly, the permanent ink, but you can also use some of our stage on cleaner that we sell and that will clean your stamp up right, right up. Though I would recommend if you use the stage on cleaner, use the stage on cleaner and then use some of our um, stamping, um, stamping cleaning solution that we have that we would normally use in the stamp and scrub because that will keep your stamp in optimum condition and then you will have them for years and years to come which is always good okay so we have our image now our watercolour pencils we sell these in two sets, set one and two I have both here and these are them now the first thing I would do when you get your pencils out like this is to put them in sort of some kind of colour family so I'm going to start to do that with you here so we've got first Daffodil Delight we've got some Crushed Curry um, let's see what else we've got Pumpkin Pie and then let's put the reds together so we've got Cherry Cobbler we've got Real Red here Flirty Flamingo and we've got some what's this one? Melon Mambo so we're coming from our pinks into our oranges, Calypso Coral and then we're going to come through into our greens so Granny Apple Green, Old Olive, Garden Green and coming then towards our blues we're going to have here Balmy Blue, I mean not one, Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana that we've got and then we've got some Balmy Blue and some Knight of Navy and Pacific Point, well I'm going to put the Pacific Point there and then we've got here, what's the purple that we've got, Gorgeous Grape Rich Razzlebury and they're coming through into our browns um, Cajun, Cajun Crazy, Espresso, so Basic Grey, Basic Black and Whisper White and now having that like that I prefer it this way around in the colour family 
means you can really see what colours you've got and how they're going to mix together and that makes the whole process so much easier if you have them in this colour wheel um, or rainbow colours if you want to use another term for it okay so let's start actually first let me show you this this is a Stabman sp spritzer and you can just spritz this over your car stock if you want if you want to put down a layer of water to start off with the other thing I always have handy is a cloth and these are our water painters they're new in the catalogue and they have three of them we have this fine point which is the one I'm going to use today then we have this one medium point and then we have this big one here which I use mainly for a wash and I will just be careful when you put this back in that you don't catch the bristles so I'm going to move those aside because I'm not going to use those ones today so get them out of the way and then we're going to start to do some colouring. I know I'm not going to colour everything with you. I'm just going to colour little bits to show you. So the first thing I'm going to colour is this little wreath here. And I'm going to use as my base colour some old olive. And I'm just going to lay down a very light um, base colour of old olive. The one trick to any kind of colouring, anything, painting, any of this thing is layers you always want to lay down layers but if you lay down layers you can build up the intensity of color you can build up the depth of color and you have a lot more control than if you're just going hard with one color so always remember layers is the trick and then I'm going to add a little bit of garden green for some variation in color because nothing is ever one color if you look at anything in real life if you're out and about and you just look how the Sun catches something there's always variations of colour, different pigmentations and all sorts of things. So there we go. And there's some little berries in here. I don't know if you can see. I'll just maybe zoom you in a little bit more. There, you can see there's some little berries. And I'm just going to colour those in quickly with a little bit of red. And this is cherry cobbler. Okay. And then we're going to colour in this bow. And I'm going to use some real red for this. And as you can see again, not using a lot of colour. That'll be enough. And then we're going to start to blend just this little bit to show you what we're going to do. So I just usually start it here on my hand. And you just press here where it says push. And that will then bring the water through the barrel to the brush. Of course you can just use a normal brush as well and some water you don't have to use this but this is just so much easier now, I tend to hold my pen quite close to the base to give me control and take my time blending because it's a very small area so you really want to control your brush the more water you have the more the color will move around the less water obviously the less the color will move around and don't be afraid of leaving some white gaps in your painting or in your colouring that you don't fill in everything absolutely perfectly with colour because that will act as highlights as well and look like sun reflections. So you can see there, starting to blend and then I just wipe it off here on my cloth um, to get rid of any colour on the pen. And now I'm just going to go in and just blend in these berries like that and then again I'm just going to wipe it off on the cloth and then I'm going to go in and do this bow you can see here I've got colour towards the top of the bow and I'm just going to use my pen to pull that colour down like that now if I want a bit more colour on the bow what I can do is you can actually take your pen to your um, pencil like that and that will give you a concentrated amount of colour and then you can add a little bit extra wherever you might want so I wanted it to be a little bit darker than it was like that okay so let's maybe have a look at something else and do a little bit we're going to maybe have a look at the frontage of the house 
and I'm going to use one of my favourite colours for this and I'm going to use this very light start with basic grey because this looks like it's, there's almost stonework here so I'm going to have a very light smattering as you can see I'm going very lightly with basic grey just very quick colouring I'm not faffing here very much about being so precise and you can see you can barely see the colour there and then for a highlight I'm going to use one of my favourite ways of highlighting things and that is using on a house so one of my favourite colours to use is a little bit of um, Cajun craze but it gives just so much depth and I'm going to use it on the brickwork in various places just as it catches the light and I'm a great fan of mixing colours I don't stick just to one colour or the other I love to mix colours I mean it's the reason I've always loved painting colouring is the joy of mixing colours you can see there it's just a very light smattering of colour it doesn't even show up on the camera that well and then again I'm going to go in with my pen and just mix everything together and the basic grey you might not doesn't almost look like you can see it but it does give a sort of a dirty colour to the Cajun Crow so it just tones it down very slightly so it's not so in your in your face and you can see there it's very mild so one more thing we'll colour in I think and um, I think we're going to colour in the um, this bench and the other thing I would say is colour with the way the image is going so here we've got slats that are going that way so that's the way I'm going to colour it in I'm not going to go against for want of a better word against the grain now I've put a bit of basic colour down so again I'm going to use my brush just to blend that out as best as I can and now I want to add a little bit of extra colour so again I'm going to do this trick take it onto my take my brush directly to my pencil and this works fine this doesn't damage your pencil at all the only thing I would suggest is don't put your pencil into water when I was a young child I had watercolours before I really knew what I was doing and I remember I dipped the whole pencil into watercolour and dread to think what I did to them because they were really good watercolour pencils as well they were Karen Dash and I dipped them straight into water because <laughs> um, I didn't know what I was doing now as well if you feel you've got too much paint down there before it dries you can just lift some of it up just with your cloth like that and then you can also if you want you can dry things up in between and then add a bit more colour as well I'm going to go in with a little bit of Cajun craze just to give some extra highlights here and there like that and then I'll use my pen to blend that out and with the Cajun craze it will just look a bit like it's a specific spot that the sun has hit okay so you can see now the last trick I'm going to show you before I let you go is snow yes most of us think snow is totally white but it isn't if you're looking at snow from the from the when you're looking at from your window there will be depth and dimensions where the light hits at the sun bits that are maybe got a bit dirty from you know footprints or whatever so it's never ever totally white you know um, even when you go on skiing and you've got bright white snow you'll have patches that are bright white and then you have patches underneath the trees which are not so bright white so you want to try and you know simulate that 
in your watercolouring and what I'm doing here is I would just use like on this roof here I'm actually going to use just a little bit of basic grey at the top here and then I'm just going to use my watercolour brush to blend that grey out and pull that colour down and then if I feel it's too much there I can just dab off a little bit and then if I want a little bit more I can just go in as I said with my pen and you can see that just makes the white you can sort of see there it just make, gives it a little bit of dimension so it's not as flat and the same is true when you're doing even here the white on the on the trees if you're just going with a little bit of your I like taking, as you can tell, taking the, um, the pen directly. So here I've got a bit and I feel it's a bit much, so I'm just going to dab up a bit. But you can see there, slightly, if you look up there, compared to there, you can see there is a little difference. It just gives it a tiny bit of dimension. Okay. And then the last thing I'll show you actually, I know I said the other one was last, but this one I'll show you. So just want to walk, clean your brush, just wet it, push the water through, wipe it off, and your brush is good to go. I will use that thick brush I showed you, if I can find it. And you can just, I'm just going to wet my cardstock away from my grid paper so I don't get everything totally wet. So now there's water on my cardstock. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't, but it is wet. There you can see. Now, this is my um, big brush here. And I'm just going to take some colour on it. And you're just going to wash it. And this is when it's actually great to use some reinkers because this really works well with reinkers. And you can just see here, you can just go across your whole cardstock and just wash it. And this is just a wash. You're just putting down a really light layer of colour. And there you can see it gives you just some, it gives you a little bit of hint of blue. And if you want to go in with more, you can add more wherever you might want it. You've got your wash. Okay. And again, just wipe the water through, wash it off. And then just put it back in there. So, there you can see roughly some tips and tricks for water colouring and you can colour the whole thing in as I did and then you can make up into a beautiful card like this so you can see here we're on the trees it's not totally white and here underneath the, the bench where I've got a little bit of grey because they the snow would have gathered and you'll have a shadow from the trees from the bench rather so there you go so the dimensions to make this card will be on the blog post on my website and the links to that and all my social media links are in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd be grateful if you could give it a thumbs up so YouTube know and don't forget to subscribe to future videos. If you want any more information, as I said, it's all on the blog post. Um, so thank you once again and until next time, enjoy being creative. Bye.